Well, I think it's just gone half past nine, so we'll, we'll get started. And I'm going to start off, as is my want, with a little quiz for you, a little test for you. Okay, can you tell me what these four words have in common? Chillax, easy breezy, nonphobia, omnishambles. I'll give you the definitions in case that makes it easy for you. Chillax means to calm down and relax and to take it easy. It's a portmanteau word of chill and relax. Easy breezy is um, especially related to clothing and it uh, means informal, casual or relaxed. Nomophobia is anxiety about not having access to a mobile phone or mobile phone services. And omnishambles, chiefly used in political circles, it's a situation that has been comprehensively mismanaged or is characterised by a series of blunders and miscalculations. So, do you know what they are? Any connection? Well, I'll tell you. They're just four of the 203 words that were added to the Oxford English Dictionary last year. Uh, it's updated twice a year. The last one was October, and I don't think this year has, has happened yet. And you see, I, I love words. From being very small, um, my dad and I used to do lots of word puzzles, and as we grew older, my mum, dad, sister, myself did lots of crosswords, were avid readers. You know, and I grew up in Swansea, in South Wales, just down the road from where Dylan Thomas was born. He was born in Cumdonkin Drive and played in Cumdonkin Park. And if you read his poem, Hunchback in the Park, it refers to all the things that you can find in Cumdonkin Park. And as a child, that's what I played. And so I connect with some of the references in his poem. Perhaps his most famous work is a play for voices, which is called Under Milkwood. I'll read you the beginning. To begin at the beginning. It is spring, moonless night in a small town, starless and Bible black. The cobblestone streets silent and the hunched quarters and rabbits wood limping invisible down to the slow back slow black, crow black, fishing boat bobbing sea. Can't you just imagine it? I love his mastery of words. And words have been a large part of my life. For many years I taught English, ran debating societies, and when I was teaching in Chichester was privileged to be able to go and hear lots of uh, famous poets reading their works both at Southampton and at Brighton University. Words have been my trade. It's how I think, it's how I connect, it's how I communicate most of all. Well, you're probably thinking, well, that's all very interesting. Well, I hope you think that's interesting, but what's this got to do? Well, moving on. Hopefully, all will become clear a little later on. I guess many of us will have welcomed the government's pronouncement last week that we can now go out and travel to some open spaces and we can meet one person from outside our household unit. And Facebook was littered last weekend, that glorious weather last weekend of lots of people, including many of you watching, uh, doing things out in the open. On Sunday, we met with one of our boys who hadn't seen since lockdown began. He's fine, if a little bit bored, uh, and it was so lovely to see him, albeit briefly. I really enjoyed seeing him. It was, it was, it was just great. But on Sunday night and on Monday, I felt really down and inexplicably sad. So as is my want, 
I turned to words to find comfort. Not to Dylan, you'll be pleased to know, but to the Bible. And in Genesis chapter 2, God says that it was not good for us to be alone. So he created relationships. And when he created mankind in his own image, he looked around and he said, it is very good. So right from the start, the Bible tells us that we were created to enjoy relationship with our creator and also with one another. And it's that second part, that relationship with one another, that's been fractured due to lockdown. And that's why I was feeling sad. It's not the relationship itself that's broken down, but it's not being able to spend time together, to laugh together, to eat together, and share life by having hugs and shaking hands and just being together. Psalm 42, one of my favorite Psalms says, and I'm gonna kind of jiggle some of the verses around, but it's all Psalm 42. Why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshippers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. Does that sound familiar to some of us where we're at? But the psalm goes on. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, God. I thirst for God, the living God. And I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my saviour and my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Even from distant Mount Hermon, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Miser, I hear the tumult of the raging seas, your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me. And through each night I sing his songs, praying to the God who gives me life. It's a beautiful psalm. And that's what I think makes Christianity unique. The God that we worship wants a personal relationship with us. Christianity isn't about rules and regulations, it's about relationship with our Creator and with one another. And although that human relationship may be strained currently, the former, our relationship with God, isn't. And during this time of lockdown, it's an opportunity to go deeper with him. Because the lockdown can't diminish the time that we spend with God. And so although our physical relationships are on hold, our relationship with God isn't and never ever will be. Verse 2 of the psalm says, I thirst for God, the living God, when can I go and meet with him? When can I go and meet with him? Well, for those of you who are old like me, in the words of an old martini advert, the answer is, when can we go and meet with him? Any time, any place, anywhere. Yes, it's hard not seeing parents, children, grandchildren, friends, family, threshold, but until we can meet freely and have tons of hugs and loads of food and fun together. Then let's keep our eyes fixed on him. It's already being suggested that there will be two new phrases added to the Oxford English Dictionary this year. And they will be unprecedented times and, you could probably hear you all shouting at me, the new normal. Well, I have no idea what the new normal will look like, but fortunately, God does. And I can trust that he has our best interests at heart. When all this first started, 
I and, and possibly some of you were just looking to the future when everything would return to the way it was. I no longer know. <laughs> the new normal is today and tomorrow and every other day. See, the truth of God's word never changes. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. And we are built for relationship. So let's not waste this time looking to when lockdown is over, although obviously we will all look forward to when that happens. But let's today, now, the new normal, look for creative ways to build relationships within our communities, with our families, with our friends, with our church. Let's make this our new normal today and not wait until after lockdown is relaxed. And yes, these are unprecedented times. We may never again be afforded such an extended period of time to dig deep into God. What an incredible opportunity we have been given. Let's not waste that. Yes, I love words as most of you will have gathered, but most of all, I love the word, the word of God that gives us life. I'd like to finish by reading what Psalm 19 verses 7 to 10 says in the Passion Translation. God's word is perfect in every way, how it revives our soul. His laws lead us to truth and his ways change the simple into wise. His teachings make us joyful and radiate his light. His precepts are so pure. His commands, how they challenge us to keep us close to his heart. The revelation light of his word makes my spirit shine radiant. Every one of the Lord's commands is right. Following them brings cheer. Nothing he says ever needs to be changed. The rarest treasures of life are found in his truth. That's why I prize God's word like others prize the finest gold. Nothing brings the soul such sweetness as seeking his living words. Let's give the final verse to Psalm 42. Why am I discouraged? Why am I so sad? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again and again and again, my Saviour and my God. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together as we finish. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the power, the kingdom and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Have a great day and uh, see you soon. Bye.